Hello and welcome to the studio. Uh, today I want to update you on my latest two block reduction print as I've reached quite an important layer to print and if you've been following me you will have seen the film about why I would do a two block reduction print and in the case of this Yorkshire landscape the reason I've chosen to do it is to pull the foreground forward and push the background away. So I'm, I'm just about to print uh, the grass on the foreground and that's going to be a bit of a game changer. Um, I'm going to show you uh, how it looks in a moment. But before I do that, I have been working on this. Uh, the first block has been the far side of the valley um, and the second block is the sky and the foreground. So I've got to the point now where I'm nearly, nearly finished. What I've got to do now is to put the grass on the foreground. So it's summer, it's Yorkshire, it's fairly lush, and um, I have to manage quite a lot of green in this print, which is always a little bit tricky. So I, I'll show you in a minute about mixing and, and inking up the green for the foreground. But before I do that, there's a couple of things that I just wanted you to have a look at. The first is to these to look at these greens here. Now I have been using extender in this far side of the valley to make the inks a little bit more transparent to give a feeling of distance and I've also tried to keep the greens although they're sort of quite bright they're subdued and I've done that partially by extender but there's a lot of grey in the mix there and that will become even more evident when I get the, the brighter greens in the foreground so have a look at it now and have a look at it when it's got the greens in and there's quite a difference um, to it. The other thing is I wanted you just to note the textures in the far hills in the grass. So when you add grass, if I, if I just added a sheet of green here, um, it would look very false because grass isn't uniform, however beautiful and short and billiard-like a lawn is for example it's never completely flat and certainly here in the wild where there are stones and things you really have to bed those stones down or it can look really unnatural so I've cut these sort of little wiggly textures in um, to the hillside and as always these are printed uh, the shadows on the grass are printed in a grey in a uniform grey but because that transparent grey is sitting on different greens, it looks like different shades of green. So those shadows are all the same colour, whether they're here or here or here. It's just that it's picking up um, the colour underneath and showing it through. So printing the grass on, on this uh, layer in the foreground is going to change it dramatically. And I have got one that I've already done to show you before I do the inking up. So here is the next layer printed and I don't like showing this layer ever because it's what I would call a dead layer. When you put a flat green on like this it looks really clunky um, because unlike the background there's no shadow or depth to it. It's just flat colour and the rocks are kind of poking through it and it's all a bit awkward. So after I've printed all of these, my next step will be to be adding some kind of texture to that grass to get it to bed down. But what I wanted to show you was the difference that that green makes to pushing these greens away. So the greens that look brighter and more vibrant in this print, suddenly everything's got shoved to the other side of the valley. And I also wanted this feeling of depth and shadow but it can't go down into really dark because it's a summer's day and we're not looking into the pits of hell we're looking into a fairly deep groove in the earth so um, managing that shadow has been quite important and you see how this looks um, is not as definite once these green layers go on as here it's much more dramatic in this one than it is in this one so when you're printing reduction, 
you have to factor in how your print will change as the layers um, grow on it. And the more experience you have with it, the more aware you become of what you do in the future and how that will affect what you're doing, the layers you're working on currently. So that's just a sort of practice thing, I think. So those are the two prints. And now I want to show you about mixing up the screen. So here I have my green that I'm going to ink up in a second. And greens are tricky to mix. And I've made videos about mixing greens. But the other thing that I want to tell you that I sometimes do, which I find quite useful, is when I'm trying to figure out a green, I quite often go out and have a look around the garden or go out on a walk and look in nature uh, to give me some inspiration. Um, here I've got a bit of pine tree and some... Um, this has come off ivy, it's the seed heads of some ivy, because I was looking for a nice sort of vibrant, interesting green. So I have mixed up more or less to match, and this is a mixture of black, phthalo blue, golden yellow and white, and that's giving me these colours. So that's a sort of darker version, and that's the paler version in a, in a rainbow roll. So... When you look at greens, have a look at nature because it's it's a really you know it's, it's a really good way of keeping your greens natural, and then experiment with colour mixing. I mean, I do that quite a lot. I try and match colours as a kind of exercise to learn how to do it. So um, here I have my green and my block to ink up, and I've got a rainbow roll here. Um, I'm not that fussed about keeping it all perfect. What I want is the slightly darker colour at the top to sort of subdue it a bit and have the brighter colour down in the foreground. And I'm using a thin layer of ink. I want good coverage, but I would rather ink, print, and then ink up again and print again to build up the colour than try and put too thick a layer on because I've got an awful lot of little twiddly bits here where the grass is wrapping around the rocks. So I don't want to overwhelm it with ink and lose that detail. So if needs be, I will go back and ink up twice. So you can see how I'm just working my way around and I'm sort of trying to keep this dark end kind of up the edges a bit. Um, as I say, I'm not fussed about having a perfect rainbow roll as such. Okay. And as always, I'm going to have a little wipe because inevitably I have managed to get some ink into the dead space. It probably wouldn't print, but it's not worth the risk. Um, the other thing that I can show you while I'm having this little white round to get rid of the ink is how I've got my lino cut here. You'll see it's cut up to the first row of clouds in the sky. There's two reasons for that. One is because having lino left up here means that the weight of my press remains balanced so that when I take a print it doesn't tilt and reduce the pressure up this end. It keeps the pressure consistent across the whole of it. The other is that I'm probably going to add a bit more detail to my clouds. What I will do is, once I've done this bit of the landscape, I will remove these parts of the sky and then print whiting over the blue sky. So it'll be very subtle but it'll just give a little bit more volume to the clouds that are already there. So I'm saving that for later. I'm not even worrying about that at the moment. Okay. The other thing that I always do, and I know I've reminded you before, but checking the edges for any stray hairs is important all the time with traditional lino because they can, they can sort of come away at any time and, and catch you out. So I have my print in the press and now I'm going to take my impression. As always, checking the registration carefully. 
So I'm going to add a little bit more pressure. So I'm not using an awful lot of pressure here. It's a sort of medium strong pressure. And that's because I don't want to, again, uh, lose any of the detail by just sort of squidging everything down. I want um, a nice even medium pressure. Actually, that coverage looks very good. I thought I might have to come back if I bring that back over to the table. I thought I might have to do that twice, but I only needed to do it once. So my next job is to find a vocabulary for the cutting uh, so that I can put some texture in the grass. I also need to put shadow up this area to give it depth so there'll be at least one more layer probably two and then as you can see up in the sky here these are the little clouds I'm talking about so I want just a, a little bit of pale in here to give it body so I'll do that with white ink printing over the blue which will take the edge off the white uh, the white ink so it won't be as bright as the actual white paper shining through, so it'll give those clouds a bit more kind of body. I want to keep them kind of really minimal and wispy, but just give them a little bit more substance there. So um, I think that's it for now, and I will keep you updated about this print and a couple of other projects. So if you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you would like to subscribe and keep up to date, please do so. It really does help. And a Happy New Year to you all.